Now there are multiple ways by which I can construct this I section. Okay, say I am making this I section from three plates, or I can make the I section from uh, five plates. Okay, so there, depending upon how you build up this I section, you have to use the appropriate shear stress. Okay, now let's say the I section is made like this. I have a plate which runs through through the entire depth of the I section, and I have flanges coming out like this and I have welding it and say I am welding it here and here. Now how will this I section fail? This I section will fail because the web flange interface is going to show a differential mo motion like this. Okay. So, this is nothing but sigma x z shear is what this weld should resist. Okay. This is the weld, these are welds and this weld should resist sigma x z shear. This is gone by sigma x z shear governs the weld design. Okay. In contrast to this I can make a I section like this or I have a through plate for the flange, a through plate for the web and a through plate for the bottom flange 2. Here again now I am going to weld at this interface now what shear stress governs the design the shear stress that governs the design here is sigma x y shear governs the weld design. or the connection design okay it can be nailed also okay because in this case i have the web and flange sitting like this when there is a differential bending this flange is going to slide off like this okay so this is basically going to produce a shear sigma xy shear okay this sliding is going to provide a sigma xy shear because x is along this direction of the force y is perpendicular to the web surface on which this flange is moving okay so this produces a sigma x y shear stress okay so the web has to be designed the weld has to be designed for sigma x y shear stress now which one of these would you prefer in a design if i want to economize on my welding depth then which one would you prefer now what is the maximum sigma x y shear stress that comes at this interface. So, I have to design for a shear stress of let us go back a slide tau 1, tau 1 is Vy by Izz into Bf into H plus Tf by 4. Basically, we are looking at this tau 1 value, the tau 1 value is given by Vy by Izz into Bf into H plus Tf by 4. Okay. So, the value here is Vy by Izz to Bf H plus Tf by 4 okay that is the shear stress that the weld should resist whereas here the shear stress that this weld should resist is given by this expression in here maximum shear stress at the web flange interface is Bf by Tf into sigma xy of the top flange or V y by I z z into B f by T w into T f into H plus T f by 2. Okay. So, let us write that I z z to B f by T w to T f 
to h plus T f by 2 right ok. Let us say this is x z y x y. Now, what is the ratio of sigma x y by sigma x z that will be T f by T w 2 times that right ok. So, typically T f by T w will be greater than 1. So, you can see that if T f if T f is greater than T w sigma x y or tau x y is greater than tau x z. So, you want to design if your weld strength is critical you have to design it as this because this will require less amount of weld depth compared to this design ok. Now, let us say I am not interested in welding it, but I am interested in nailing this I section like this I am going to build up a I section from, from wood instead of steel. and I have a nail which goes through like this ok. I have a nail which goes through like that. In the top view this is y and z and if I plot the top view which is x and z ok. Now, this nail would be positioned at some regular intervals say the spacing between the nails was s and I am interested in finding out what should the spacing be given that the shear strength of a nail is of a nail is tau max ok. So, and the area of the nail is A n ok. Now, I am interested in finding what should be the spacing of this nail, so that it can withstand the shear stresses that are coming on that section ok. So, here as you see it has to withstand sigma x y stress, the nail has to withstand because the flange is going to slide like this, the nail has to withstand the sigma x y stress ok and the sigma x y stress at that interface is given by v y by i z z into b f from a b f by t w to t f to h plus t f by 2 ok. Now, this shear stress into s into t w that is the that is what we are saying is here the web is like this this is T w ok. So, this nail should withstand whatever stress comes in this region this distance is yes. I am assuming the nails are uniformly spaced ok and d n s I am assuming that s by 2 is this distance this distance is s by 2 and this distance is also s by 2 ok. So, the net distance is s and the net area is this entire area that is s into T w ok. This should be resisted by tau max into area of nail ok. So, the entire shear stress that comes shear force that comes in that area has to be resisted but by that single nail there ok. So, a into a n 
Now I know A n, I know tau max, I know the cross sectional dimensions, I know V y, I z, z and all those things. So, from here I can find what S is, the spacing of the nails I can find from here. Okay. So, as we saw in the uh, previous lecture, if I did not have this nail and if I add just the plates place one top of the other, there will not be integral action and then there will not be, uh, there will be separation of the surfaces between the web and the flange and the ends will not resist the load as you want to resist unless you design the connection properly. Okay. So, there is a reason why you have to find the shear stresses and there is a reason why you have to design the connection to resist the shear stress that comes on that section appropriately. Okay. Now, now let us look at the equilibrium of forces and moments due to the shear stress distribution at the section. Okay. So, I have an I section okay. I have an I section. So, uh, the flange width along the two directions were the same. Okay. So, basically what will happen is I add a shear flow like this Okay. So, this was B f by 2 and this was B f by 2 and these two horizontal forces, these two horizontal forces cancels out each other, they will be of the same magnitude as does the horizontal force on the top flange here on this side and on this side okay. and the sum of this vertical shear stresses would integrate to give you V y that is integral sigma x y d a x a x would give me V y. Okay. You can show that I am not going to show in this course, but you can integrate the expression that we got for sigma x y integrate this d a x is d y d z. You can integrate and you can see that it will lead to V y. Okay. Now, let us look at, so the first equilibrium is satisfied. Okay. Now, let us look at the moment equilibrium. Okay. The moment equilibrium what happens? There is a net horizontal force here, say this is q 1, there is a net horizontal force of the same magnitude q 1 on this side. Okay. So, what is this going to do? This is going to produce a clockwise moment. Okay. This is going to produce a clockwise moment. Similarly, there is a net force this will also be of magnitude q 1 acting like this q 1 will be a net force q 1 acting like this and a net force q 1 acting like this. Now, these are again balanced forces separated by a lever arm this produces a anti clockwise moment or the same magnitude as the clockwise moment that was produced by these shear stresses by the other shear stresses right. So, what will happen is now this section there is no torsion net torsion in this section. This moments that is generated due to this q 1 being separated by some distance is a moment along the axis of the beam. Okay. The moment that this q 1 generate is along the axis of the beam and then the, those are torsional moments. In this cross section since all the forces were equal and separated by the same lever arm the torsional moment net torsional moment is 0 for this section but there are sections where this will not happen and in the next class let us see what happens for those sections. Okay. So, in the next class we will see what happens to those sections where there is a net torsional moment coming in because of the shear stress distribution. Okay. Thank you.